Hello, this is Katie. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these beautiful earrings. So obviously there will be a pair because I've already made this one and we're going to go ahead and make the other one to make a pair. So these earrings, they are bare copper. You can use any wire you want to. The base wire is a 1.25 millimeter wire. So it's a really strong wire. It's going to give us a really good frame to work upon. Then we're going to be using a 0.4 millimeter wire and that's for the weaving part of it so that's all this section in the middle here we're going to add some two millimeter beads so these are actually peridot on mine you can use whatever you want you could even use a three millimeter bead if you wanted to because you'll just make them fit so i've added a large jump ring too so the size of this is 10 millimeters from the outside to outside so the outside diameter and I've just got an earring finding, so I've got a copper earring finding as well. So, and it looks still looks beautiful on this side. And what I've done is I've kind of worked at, at this little weaving section once I've finished and made it a little bit concave. So as it catches the light, you'll get that beautiful um, luster as it catches the light as well. Okay, so we're going to get on and start making. So to make, we're going to need some tools. So the tools that I've got here, are, I've got some chain nose pliers. I've got some six step bail making pliers. We're gonna be using one of the smallest ones on these. I've also got some larger bailing pliers. I'm gonna be using the larger ones. So that's gonna make that kind of loop at the bottom. But don't worry if you haven't got um, these larger ones, you can use things like maybe the end of your hammer, anything that's a mandrel. The one thing that's really good is um, like a nail polish lids, that, that sort of thing, or even things like your trusty old print stick and stuff like that. Okay, uh, we'll also be using some flush cutters. So I've got my jump ring there, I've got my earring finding ready, and I've got my wire. So I will just say the other things that you are gonna need is a hammer and block. I'm gonna be using a rawhide hammer and a normal um, ball pain hammer as well, but you can use either or both, it's up to you. Okay, so and I've got my two millimeter peridot beads. So I'm just gonna move a few things out of the way. And we're gonna look at our main wire. So our main wire is the 1.25 wire and it is about six inches in length. So six inches is about 15 centimeters. And what we want to do is create that loop, okay? So I'm gonna pop my pliers in around about the middle. Don't worry if it's not exactly the middle because we can kind of work it out. Okay, so now we've got our pliers on that largest size and I'm just gonna push up at each side, just nice and gently. It is a very thick wire, but it's very, it's still quite uh, easy to manipulate. Now, how you can find that you got in the middle is if they come together in a, in a point. So that is very slightly off. Can you see that there? So all I'm gonna do is gonna push that side a little bit further and when we bring them together in the middle, we know they're spot on. So, and then what we want to do is cross them over. Okay, now I want this to match the opposite side. So what you will find is a little tip, if you do have this type of pliers, you see the inside here, it's a little bit flat, not as round as here. So you can see that little flat piece that I've got on the bottom there. So I'm just gonna go in back in with my pliers and just kind of shape that just so that I get the round all the way around. I'm just gonna kind of nibble that around there like so. So we get that nice more rounded shape. Okay, now I want this to match my original. What I would do is say make a pair and make them at the same time. I do already have one pre-prepared that I did make at the same time as this. But what you want to do is bring these around and what sometimes is easier is if you've got something to kind of guide you so I'm going to bring these around and cross them over like so so I'm kind of using the other side of the pliers there so I'm just going to cross them over like so just so that I'm getting around about the same shape now I'm just going to try and guess you won't have to do this because you can just do two at a time you can just pop two in your pliers and cross them over so that and what what can you see what I'm doing there? Going that little bit further, and then it it kind of bounces back a little bit. So I'm just trying to get this so around about the same size. Don't worry because I do have one the same size, so I can see where I need to put my pliers in now. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. 
So from here, I'm going to pop my pliers in right where that cross is there. So I've got my pliers in right there. And what I want to do is more or less straighten this up. So I've got my finger inside and I'm just going to pop my pliers in right at the tip and bring this so it's more kind of straight out at the top rather than crossing over. I'm going to do the same at the opposite side. So I'm going to pop my pliers in and I'm just supporting the inner wire here and then I can just push that out so that we've got two coming straight out rather than sort of crossing over or at angles. Now this is easier if you do both at the same time if you're doing a pair of earrings and then you'll get the exact same shape. Okay, so we're going to sort those out there. Now what we need to do, and this is important again that you do two again, two in tandem with each other. Like I said, I've already got one made. So what you're going to do now is you're going to snip off this section here so that we can turn this back. So what we want to do is we want to go from exactly, so I'm going to pop my fingernail exactly where that little um, indentation is that I made on the wire. And I'm going to go around about a centimetre away from it. So snipping one off and the other. So I know I've got them exactly the same length, like so. Now what we need to do is make a little bend in these. So this bend is forwards. So we're thinking of this as the front of our earring. And what we want to do is create this little loop here, but can you see it actually comes forwards before we create the loop. If we just create it straight from there, this would be flat all the way up and then the loop would just be on the back. We want the loop to sit more central, okay? So we're gonna pull these forwards a little bit. So we're gonna go in where we made that little indentation, so where that angle changes here, okay? So this side here. So we're gonna support all this and then we're just gonna tip those forwards a little bit. So if I hold that there, you can see if this is flat, we've just tipped it forwards a little bit. It's probably an almost a 45 degree angle, that, that sort of angle range. Okay, so now we can take those out and we can go in with our six step bailing pliers. I'm going for the second size, which is around about a three mil. And then I'm gonna pop my pliers in right at the very tip. So when I say right at the tip, I can't feel the wire on this side of the pliers. So then I can just roll this back. So just start rolling that back. I've not rolled it all the way just yet. Let me see that there, I've not rolled it all the way. And I go to the other side and do the same. So right at the very tip and roll, roll, roll. Not all the way again. Now the reason why I've stopped there is because when you do any sort of loop, you get a very tiny little part just on the very end. You know where we just grabbed it right at the beginning? That will that tiny, tiny part will be straighter than the rest of it because the rest of it is curved round. So just, and I mean literally just like a millimetre. I know it seems a little bit picky, but it will make a difference to your finished piece. So we're just going to take a tiny little piece off each one. Not much at all, but it will give you overall a nicer finish when we come to the very end. Okay, now we can go back in with our pliers. So back in and roll that all the way down. So it's actually coming and meeting the wire. And you can see, because we pulled it forward first, we've got a loop at the top of the wire and not kind of, it's more like, if you imagine it, more like a lollipop than a P shape. Yeah, so the, the letter P. Okay, so we're gonna do the same at this side and pull that down, so make sure you change position so you don't distort anything else. And always supporting your wire, like so. So now that's all the way in. Now you'll probably find they'll splay out a little bit from each other, so just use your pliers just to make sure they're sitting nice and straight to each other, so that when you pull them together, they'll be nice and more together than um, trying to separate. Okay, so just spend a little bit of time just manipulating the wire to exactly where you want it. It is a strong wire and it's it's great, it's really sturdy, but because we're wrapping upon it and we want it to be as strong as we can possibly get it, I want to use the hammer. So this is a, a block, so this is a steel block 
Underneath it, I've got a rubber block. That's just going to dampen the sound a bit. It's still going to be noisy, so I do apologise if you are listening with headphones. Just be aware it will be noisy for a few seconds. Um, what we want to do is we can't just pop it on like this because we've got a shape in this side. So we need to pop it on to the steel block with these little pieces at the edge. But that's going to give you something to hold. Now you can use a normal ball paint hammer, which is your steel hammer, which that will it will work hard on it and strengthen it, but it will also flatten the metal. We don't I don't particularly want to flatten the metal. It could it could be what you want, it, it will change the look of it slightly, so go with what how you prefer. But for this one, I'm going to use my rawhide hammer. So this is a rawhide hammer. This is around about 400 grams, which is around about um, seven or eight ounces. Okay, pounds, sorry, not ounces. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the hammer right at the end. So I'm using the weight of the hammer. I'm not holding it up here and, and bashing the metal. I'm holding it so that I'm holding the, the end of the hammer. And that's how you should hold your hammer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, I'm just going to tap like so, and I'm using, I'm not pushing down with any force, the weight of the hammer is doing the job. Okay, so. Be very careful of your fingers. So, and that's all it needs. So what that does, it kind of moves the molecules inside the metal and, um, makes it create a stronger sort of bond together and um, you will get a stronger piece of metal. So that's work hardening the metal. Right, so now we need to start wrapping. So to start the wrapping, you would think it would be easier to start wrapping at the bottom and go up to the top. So it's always easier to wrap from a small space, this bit at the top, into a larger space. If you're going into a smaller space, which you will see when we get down to here, because this bit comes round and comes smaller, the wire jumps. So we're going for the easiest way of wrapping this, so starting at the top and wrapping down towards the bottom. So for this, I'm going to take my 0.4mm wire, and this I've got two metres of wire. It does seem like a lot of wire for an earring, but all this wrapping does consume a lot of wire, so we're going to wrap from the top down to this point here. Okay, so we're gonna go in. Just for this initial wrap, we can utilize the little gap that we've got up here. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pop my wire up through the loop. I'm gonna hold a little tail of it to one side, just cause you need something to kind of grab hold of. So my little tail's at one side there. Let's move these out of the way. And I'm gonna pop a couple of anchor wraps. So the first wraps we always call an anchor wrap. But for this, I'm going to utilise that gap that I've got in there. So I'm going to pop one, two, and then come around to the top. Push those wraps together nice and neatly. So this is what we have. We have our anchor wraps on there. Got our anchor wraps on there. We've got a little tail of wire. Don't worry about that for now. And then we've got our working wire. So this is the long length. This is the length that we've got two meters of. Now a wire from this side, our working wire, is coming over the top of this side. So we want to go underneath at the other side. So we're gonna come down and under, just for this one. We're gonna pinch these together, so they're nice and tightly together. And then we're gonna come under this side and through the loop. And then you're gonna to have to pull all this wire through the loop. Now when you pull the wire, what you don't want to do is run your fingers down the wire. I'll do that again because we're going to put another wrap on this side. So you're going to come around, got a nice wrap together nice and tightly there, push the wire through and I'm just using a finger like so. I'm not using the warmth of my hand at all, I'm just sweeping it through. Okay, And then I've got two wraps on this side. So my wires come over the top at the side closest to me, so I'm going to go underneath at the side furthest away from me. And we're gonna put two wraps on that side, so that's one. And another one. So this is a really basic basket weave or a figure of eight weave. If you can imagine taking a cross section of this, you're making that figure of eight um, uh, shape. Okay, so I've got two wraps on the opposite side 
two wraps on the opposite side my wires come over the top at the at that side so it's going to go underneath at the other side okay so i'm just going to build this up a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better and then we'll move on to a pre-made piece that i've got so we've got two wraps on that side that's come over so we're going to go under the opposite side over once and again never running your fingers down the wire the wire that's all that's going to do is work hard on the wire because you're working the wire you're touching the wire and also because once it's work hardened it will be very hard for you to wrap with and it can also become brittle and snap okay so we're just going to pop another couple of wraps in this side so I'm just going to jump ahead and show you when I've wrapped down a little bit more of how it should be looking okay so once you've worked down a little bit you'll be able to see that weave starting to develop and you can see each one is going under over under over so it's two wraps on the side then under or over and then the same so you're doing a figure eight but like an extra wrap on each side too this is what you will get to eventually and as you can see just like i was just previously talking about as we start to come in it will start to try and bounce into the smallest space so as you do these last few wraps when we get down to this last little section so this is a little section that i've left open so it's only it's probably about it's not even a centimeter it is in fact i'll tell you what it is let me just uh grab this so the depth is about six millimeters so it's about six millimeters from sort of the inside edge of the bottom to the inside edge of your weaves so we're just leaving that little gap just so that we've got a little space to pop our beads into okay so again like making sure that you pull that side down so i'll just do one more wrap for you so pulling that side down so this is a technique that you're going to use when you come to the this bit where it's going to try and jump you're going to hold it down with your fingernail and then come over to the other side can you see it's trying to it's trying to bounce back so hold it down and then come down around to the other side and through so so we're going to start wrapping some gemstones on now so i'm just going to pop that last wrap in there make sure everything's pushed up as far as i can Let's put another one in so on this one i've added eight of my peridot gemstones so these are on my wire here so i've just popped a little stop at the end of my wire and i've got my gemstones attached so we're going to start adding and wrapping on these gemstones so we're going to drop a gemstone down so we want that to come all the way down our wire so just bear with me a second it doesn't want to go there we go so we've dropped a gemstone down so i've got got my little gemstone on my wire there so I want it to sit on the inside so I'm going to push it over and ask it to sit on the inside then I'm going to hold the gemstone in place that's exactly where I want it to be and I'm just going to wrap around the frame so I've hold the gemstones in between my finger and the thumb I show you it's there and then I'm going to wrap around the frame so my frames so I'm always wrapping around 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 so there we go so the wires coming down the back so that I've got my gemstone on here my wires are down the back and I'm just going to do an extra wrap so that's going to secure that and lock that one in place okay so when we look at it here we can see my I've got my wire coming off my gemstone and I've got one wrap so but then the wire is going to come back over so it's going to look like we've got two wraps but we're going to add another gemstone okay so we're going to pop another gemstone down so I'll just encourage this one to come down there's a little kink in my wire it doesn't want to go past so I've got my next gemstone down and push through the wire I've got this in place come around the back and wrap onto the frame so we're going to do this for as many as it takes to fill this gap so on the first one it took eight so I really want to because it's a pair to get eight in this gap as well so I'm going to continue popping those on so I've just added my last gemstone so it's just there just on the edge so you can just see that last gemstone that I've added so I just need to finish off this wire and make sure that I finish on two good nice neat wraps 
So we've got a nice solid finish. So I've got one in there, push that together, and then another. So coming through the inside of the earring and around. So I just want to make sure that I've got a really good, strong finish on my wire wrapping. Now what I'm going to do is I want to finish this on the inside. So I've just brought it around the outside of that frame. I'm just going to give it a little squish with my pliers. And I'm just going to cut it. So if we just get this to focus. So I'm going to cut it so that I'm cutting with the flush side of my pliers. So the flat side closest to my work. And I'm going to cut it right up to the frame there. So you can see there's just that little edge. It's that little edge just kind of stuck out. And then I can just use my pliers, my round, my chain nose pliers, just to kind of tuck that edge in. Okay, so my white, my gemstones are all in place, like so. And now all I need to do is make kind of that nice concave part. So what I did, you can use your thumbnail if you want to, but you can actually use the end of your pliers. So just very gently, so I'm just leaning it against the actual um, mat. I'm just very gently just encouraging that kind of concave on the inside so it gets the nice kind of look when it when it moves around in your ear okay so the next thing we need to do is just pop the rest of it together so I've got a jump ring which I've hammered so I'm hoping you're going to be able to see the difference in these so these are the same jump ring and this one's round and this one I've hammered a little bit flat so it's just a bit of a design feature so you see the difference in them yeah so it's just a design feature just you can do it however you want to but all I did was I just got a general jump ring popped it on my block using the steel hammer so the the ball pane hammer and just tappy 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 again my hands right at the end of the hammer and what that will do is it will flatten the actual metal so what it also might do is open it up very slightly so if I just hold this up can you see it's just very slightly open there we go if I hold that up you can see it's very slightly open so you do need to make sure that you make sure this is closed I'm just going to grab another pair of pliers so just make sure just give it a little wiggle 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 so that we close that up. So even though now I've closed it, I'm just gonna open it very slightly and I can pop on my earring and then I can pop on the finding, just make sure you get it the right way around so you've got the front of the earring here. So the joins for the actual original loops that we did will be on the back there. So I've just popped everything on. So I've got my jump ring onto my earring then my earring onto the jump ring and then I can close this up so holding one side nice and steady and then using pliers from your more dominant hand so this is your least dominant hand that is holding nice and steady and then we can just give that wiggle wiggle and you can kind of feel that they've kind of gripped together and that they're in the right place and then your earring is all done so now we've got a pair of beautiful earrings. Now these are ready to wear or you can treat them with some Renaissance wax if you're worried about um, copper uh, tarnishing your skin or making any sort of marks on your skin. But it, we, copper does have healing properties. What I'm going to do with them is I'm going to patina them. So I will show you a picture right just, uh, just as this video finishes of the patinaed pair of earrings. So patina means to age something, so to give it more of, of an aged look to it. I'll just grab something that is patinaed. So this is what happens to copper when you patina it, like so. So I'm going to patina that and I will add the little image at the very end and pop an image maybe at the beginning as well. Okay, so thank you very much for watching today. It's been a pleasure making these for you and uh, don't forget to like my video and subscribe because there's so much more I've got planned for this year. There's got so much more coming. So I will see you again soon. Thank you.